Right, I'm here today in the Mapton kitchen and I've got my mother on the screen in the top left and I've got David Pagan Butler below and we are here to talk about the next steps with the Mapton swimming pool. And David and Mum have not yet met each other. Um, David has been to Mapperton, as you may have seen, and has done some wonderful drawings of how things might look. Um, and Mum has had a look at some of those. And Mum, this is all about getting your feedback and seeing where we go from here to try and come up with a plan for the pool. But I thought, first of all, David, maybe you could just describe in broad terms what, what we're trying to do and why you've sketched things the way they are. OK, Luke, what we're trying to do is introduce plants into the pool because plants are the only thing that are going to compete in the long term with the algae. So it's a matter of uh, creating plant beds or floating islands as, as an alternative or using both in order to get a different variety of species or a, a range of species to exist within the pool. And that the broader the range we have, the greater the probability is that they will outcompete the algae. Uh, ideally, uh, within this pool, you would have planted beds probably all the way along you know, the, the flank of each side because we're trying to get towards having about 50% of the pool area covered in plants. But you know, we can work with less than that and so as, a, as, a, as an alternative or to, for, for a lesser impact or to create, a, I know, uh, Caroline, you, you were after a more um, sinuous, sinuous feel to the pool. So that's why with this picture, um, with, the, with the plant beds, uh, we've you know, I've put them either side to alternate it. So there's a, there's a natural flow of uh, you know, more, a more of a wavy structure, less of a formal rectangle within the pool. I'm very interested in what you're saying, David, and thank you very much for explaining it to me. Um, you're actually saying that 50% of the pool uh, covered in plants would yield the best result, correct? That's right, yes. That's, the, that's that, the idea. Does that, does that depend on the volume of water? Yeah, it's normally um, and it, uh, just a, a proportion of the area. So the volume itself is not material, but it's a, it's a very uh, rule of thumb. It's a, you know, not particularly scientific it's just a good thing to aim for but it's normally in terms of area of the pool because it's all to do with you know photosynthesis really so it's which plants so it's get all working on the surface anyway you mean yes exactly so, yeah, the trouble is on the surface uh, should we have a look at these these drawings and then david you could talk us through and mum you could comment can i just add something in i just want to say that i'm wholly in favor of doing this i think it'll look wonderful i think it's the right thing to do uh, that swimming pool has always been extremely tiresome since the days when I was able to pour vast great buckets of chlorine into it when it went pale blue which looked tedious and we were all able to swim in this disgustingly chlorinated water and then I think I put in flocculent that took everything to the bottom and again it looked clear for about two days but I'd far rather swim in a green natural pool and I hope everybody else with would because it looks lovely and it's natural and it's right and it's sort of to do with how we're trying to live. So I'm really, really grateful to you for coming along and pushing Luke in the right direction. <laughs> right, I'm just going to share the screen. So we're going to have a look at the couple of the pictures, David. Maybe you could, you could tell us what you've put in here. <clears throat> oh my, God. these were just um, sort of brief sketches I did just to, 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 to illustrate a point. I wasn't expecting them to be sort of publicly transmitted. But anyway, it's fine. You've made a real effort. I mean, each of those little bubbles is, you know, you've taken a bit of time. Oh, yeah, there's a bit of love goes on there. Yeah, well, that's me daydreaming, probably. Um, but with this, uh, it was just a quick way uh, of, of putting together a planted bed with... Uh, a bubble powered filtration system that could just sit within the pool rather than make bespoke kits, uh, bespoke uh, planted boxes that would sit under the water. I just thought that if you wanted to get something uh, up and ready quickly, then you could use half barrels, big, big barrels with, you know, almost a meter uh, diameter and, um, and put them within the pool and alternate them, uh, you know, either side. It's just sitting on the bottom of the pool. And the, the lilies, you know, can be very tolerant of a, of a range of depth. So 
But what we want really are floating leaf plants because they provide shade. So they're shading the water and in doing so preventing the algae from flourishing, um, as well as you know, photosynthesizing. And as they grow, they're absorbing the nutrients from the water, which again will inhibit the algae. So um, this is the same thing in a cross section. I'm assuming. Yes, th th that's right. This is more, uh, more of a functional drawing just to show what's happening. Um, <clears throat> so the water has been drawn up through that vertical pipe because uh, we've introduced air into the bottom there. There's like an air stone, which is an aquarium air stone. So bubbles are uh, going up the pipe. And as they go up the pipe, the water gets accelerated and uh, gets sucked out of the bottom layer. Um, and to replace that water, water gets drawn down through the planted layer um, and the plant substrate. And as it passes the roots, the roots are then you know, accumulating the nutrients from the water. So does that mean, David, that it's, there are two things going on here that are important? One is the nutrients are coming into the substrate to feed the plants, but also you're circulating the water in the pool. Are those the two things you're trying to do? That's it, exactly, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's working as a filter, but when that water rises up through the uh, vertical pipe, it hits the surface and the water then travels horizontally over the surface across the, across the pool until it meets another obstacle, which is either an equal and opposite current or the opposite side of the pool, then it drops down a bit and then comes back. So it creates like a, a conveyor. So it's pushing water all over the pool, not just you know within its locale. I don't understand something. I'm very sorry, David. How are you getting the water to move in the first place? Is this by an electric current that's pushing the water somewhere <clears> or is it all entirely um, naturally uh, created. We've got a little air compressor about this big. Oh, I see. So yeah. you have actually got a compressor. Right, so you've got some electricity dealing with this. Yeah, so there's a small amount of electricity to provide the uh, uh, compressed air that we just feed to these barrels via a hose pipe. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and um, we'll make sure we use green energy, of course, for the electrics. But, but David, you were saying that actually that the motor in that compressor is is much smaller than you would have in a traditional um, pump house for a pool. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, so the, the 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 compressor um, probably for this pool will probably uh, need to be about 100 watts. It could be could be um, uh, it might not be 150 because this is a really long pool, it's about 34 meters. Um, so, but compare that to a swimming pool pump, which will be uh you know at least 1.5 kilowatts and for this pool it's probably more like three kilowatts so it's a you know it's an order of magnitude less so david on this drawing you've included two things you've got both the half barrels that are sitting on the bottom and then you've got some floating islands which i believe are made of tires is that that's what we're seeing, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's right. Those 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 planting planted planted islands are made of tires, which, which does sound a bit um, oh, I don't know, a bit a bit rough and ready. Which is exactly what they are. It's 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 a, it's a sort of recycling, uh, you know, idea really. So I, I've made these, and the, the, it does sound particularly brutal, but they're they're actually really lovely and soft in the end. But it's just a way of making a, a fl floating island to uh, you know, very quickly using um, recycled materials. And the idea about floating islands is that then it, it can, you can provide habitat for a whole range of, of other plants, more emergent plants like rushes and um, you know, irises and uh, grasses. Those type of plants, those emergent plants are really very effective at absorbing nutrients. They grow really quickly because they've got their feet in water and they've got their leaves in in the air, which is far richer in carbon dioxide, so that they can photosynthesize at a greater rate than the algae in the pool. In in all of this, David, we're we're trying to get these plants to absorb more of the phosphate more quickly. I mean, it's phosphate really when we talk about nutrients, is yeah, it phosphate. not? Phosphate. Yeah, that's exactly right. It is the phosphate. Because the phosphate or the phosphorus is the limiting nutrient in, in, a, in a, a pond or a pool system normally. So we're, we're aiming at reducing the level of, of phosphate. And when we do that, then the algae will be inhibited 
so you shouldn't get huge plumes of algae. And we, and Mum, um, David, David, David did a did a phosphate test when he came here um, to yeah. check the levels of the phosphate. David, what what remind me what the level was? It was sort of off the chart a bit, I think. Um, the, the actual figure was point uh, three one milligrams per litre. Um, ideally, it would be uh, ideally it would be you know a hundred times less than that. Or, or at the maximum, sort of 10 times less, you know, 0.03 milligrams per litre. So what you're actually saying is that these phosphates, these are natural phosphates, they're not phosphates coming from intensive agriculture, which we don't have. They're natural phosphates. Exactly. And what we're trying to do is get, um, is substitute different plants that will take the place of these fast growing and wonderful algae. I mean, appalling algae, or whatever you like to call them. But they are rather wonderful. They grow so fast. Yeah. But the phosphate, we can't do anything about the volume of phosphate. Is that correct? No, that, that's right. Um, the, the idea would be that once we'd filled the pool, uh, once the pool is filled with that, with that water, which contains you know, quite a high, high level of phosphate, then we stop filling the pool. So there's no continual uh, pool filling, which hopefully might be okay if the, all the holes are plugged in the, in the pool. And then as the plants grow, the plant, in, in the plant pots and the, the floating islands we've put in, the plants will then assimilate uh, those nutrients into their biomass. And then it's only at the end of the year in the autumn when you crop the plants, take that uh, biomass away and put it on the compost heap. Um, so that's how that level of nutrient would be removed from the pool that would be the strategy on this drawing david this was your first one and again you've it's a it's a very um uh it's a very detailed sketch that you've done this is this is this idea of 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 um planter using a tire followed by barrel followed by planter all along the sides um and mum this was the first sketch which i think i sent you yep um and, and then david revised that to to show this one here which is which is breaking it up so that it's not just one long thing on each side and then david subsequent to that mum has um annotated so maybe maybe mum this is the moment for you to give your <laughs> your response to the design and what you'd like to see <clears throat> yeah well i thought that the previous one which was very regular um didn't really have any sort of atmospheric environment, not environmental in the sense of ecology, but atmospheric and um, sort of romantic feel to it. I thought it was too sort of straight up and down. Do you mean this one here? Yeah, that one there. I'm not talking about the other one at all. Too, too, too regular for your taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boring, um, with due respect. I mean, very interesting, <laughs> but not really interesting. Um, yeah. So what I did here was look at what you'd done and suggest that we could make it a little bit more irregular, a little bit more atmospheric, just a little bit less uh, classical, a little bit more romantic. But if we had, you know, all these plants going round the steps, you'd be getting into the pool, in among the bulrushes, and, the, and again, the same on the left-hand side. What I'm trying to do all the time is ensure that the view up the pool from the deep end to the summer house is contained, is, re remains the same, and you still get this wonderful sense of space that you space and um, perspective that you get at the moment. But I just thought that rectangular ones would look better and they'd look more in keeping with the pool and I thought if they were irregular, they'd look more um, elegant. Carol, I'm, I'm totally with you. I mean, I did originally just do um, submerged planting boxes. And then um, it was only because I thought you were under time pressure to, uh, to, to, you know, to come up with some solution that I then thought, well, OK, a, a good quick fix would be use, you know, uh, bespoke barrels just off the shelf. Hmm. Um, uh, but I did, I did do a few, you know, a few ideas for for, for planted. Uh, you know, I think I think it would be great what you're proposing. 
it would just be a lot more expensive. With those planters, rectangular planters, David, are are they needing to be built up from the from the bottom of the pool, or or could they be floating? What's the method of of construction? Ideally, it would be planted on the bottom of the pool. They would be plant beds at the, at the bottom of the pool, so that then you can you know putting you gravel layers. Just 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 as I've um, you know shown on that barrel. Uh, the barrel one. So you have the the, the alternate, you have the, the the layers of gravel, and then the plants can sit within that, and they can have a you know a meter or so of water above them. Um, so those those would be the key thing, and then that will allow us to put in the you know the, the air filtration system. Uh, you know, I, I think I think what we do is just just go with your idea of how they're laid out, and I'll just come up with alternatives. Um, you know, whether the sunken, whether the floating um, uh, islands uh, or a combination of the two throughout the pool. David, um, does that give you enough to to come up with a new sp sort of proposal and specification? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's great. I mean, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reinvigorated. And, um, and David, that's absolutely wonderful. And we'll have more dragonflies. We already have the most beautiful blue and green dragonflies. And we have a kingfisher from time to time down there. And we'll get, and we have thousands of little water boatmen running all over the place. We already have newts and frogs, no, toad spawn. I don't think we have frogs. Spawn. And it'll just make it so much more beautiful. And if we have some of those lovely um, aquatic plants that you were suggesting, it will be a real dream. David, thank you again. And um, Mum, I think that's all quite clear. And we will probably reconvene when David's had a chance to um, put a new sketch together. And David, don't spend hours on it. We, you know, no. you don't need you don't need to colour it in for us. We can we can we can have it in black and white unless you want to. I, I love the colouring in, but it was really relaxing. That's a nice bit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do the colouring in bit. That only took me about two seconds. Yeah, maybe maybe leave half of it uncoloured for Mum. How about that? Yeah, and then I can be... colour it in like a like an old lady colouring it in. <laughs> well, 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 we'll have to create a scrapbook which shows the whole evolution of the thing. That'd be um, good. Yeah. Um, great, Mum, David, thank you very much. Not at all. Great. Thank you very much for thank letting you. me come in. It's been a delight. Thank you.